Good afternoon everyone. Today we're going to see how to do a minimap and also how to when we press a key on our keyboard the map is getting bigger for us. And I will show you how to have your map static so that doesn't rotate with your player or also if you want it to rotate with your player. I'll show you how to import your own image so you can get the image that you want for your minimap. And that's pretty much this. So we'll jump in the new project to show you exactly how to do this. In our new project, we're going to open the third person character blueprint that you can find under third person uh, folder and blueprint folder. When you're in it here in the top uh, left corner, we're going to add two components. So we're going to look first for a spring arm. And with the spring arm selected in blue here, we're going to search for a scene component and we're going to take the one 2D here. Going to make sure that it's under the spring arm. So that way, when we control the spring arm, the scene component is going to follow at the same time. So now we're just going to rotate uh, this to the top view of our character. Now we have the spring arm, so we can decide the distance of we want our camera to be. I found that the thousand is pretty good, but you can play with those value if uh, you want, obviously. So it's going to be the distance between uh, you and the camera, which is going to display on your minimap. So if you want to see more of your minimap, you just put the camera higher up. We're going to need to create a texture render. So we're going to need to plug that texture render to our capture or scene capture component here. So if we go down here on the scene capture, we have to put a texture there. So the texture will be used by the camera to generate uh, what we have on the screen. So we're going to go to content uh, browser. And here I'm just going to go to my mini map folder and I'm going to search for texture and I'm going to click on the render target. I'm going to call that uh, mini map. And I'm just going to open it and save that and I can close it. So now with this selected, you can click on your arrow here or just, you know, search minimap. We're going to put it right there and do compile and save. From this point, we're going to need a texture itself, like a material to be able uh, to basically show all of that on the screen. So we're going to go on texture, uh, not texture, but we're going to go on material and we're going to create a new material. I'm going to call this material minimap underscore M and I'm going to open it here with the, the uh, result not selected. We're just going to go here in the detail panel and we have to change the, uh, the surface here, not the surface, but the, uh, I'm searching for UI here. Oh, here we go. Surface material and the user interface. So it's going to remove a few things here. It's going to be more simple. Now we just have to take our mini map render that we did earlier. Just drag it right here. And we just plug it to our final color here. And we're just going to save that here. So you can see we have our character right here. It's a little bit small, but if I zoom, you can see it's the character right there. So we're going to save that and close it. We're going to come back to that later. Um, so now we have this. So we need a way to see that camera on the screen. So for this, we're going to create our user interface and we're going to create a user, uh, I mean a widget blueprint. And we're going to create that now. So I'm just going to call that mini map underscore widget blueprint and I'm going to open this. We're going to add a canvas panel so we can see our screen and in the canvas panel here I'm going to search for an image. This image will be our minimap so you can size the way you want so I'm going to put around this size here 
and with your minimap, not the minimap, but the image here selected, I'm just going to rename that to minimap. And here under appearance and brush, we're going to select our material. So we call it that minimap and we're going to select this one here. And I'm just going to compile it. So if I do play, now we can see that we don't have it on the screen. So to display that on the screen, we're going to have to go back to our third person character, go to the event graph, and we're going to search for even begin play. And from that, we're just going to drag and create a widget. And from that, we're going to select our minimap widget blueprint. And to see it on the screen, well, not promote that to a variable, but we're just going to drag from it and add this to the viewport. Add to viewport like this. So if we compile and do play now, we can see we have the minimap on the top here, but you see the minimap is rotating at the same time as we move. So, and I don't like that. So I'm going to change that now. So we're going to go back to our uh, blueprint here. And we're going to go to the viewport and we're just going to click on the uh, scene component 2d here and if we go down uh, let me try to find it here well unless it's the spring arm that's the spring arm here so click on the spring arm and if you deselect uncheck the under camera setting all of this and you compile if you go play now, you can see that it's not moving anymore. Your character is moving in a different section, but the, the screen of your camera, I mean, the minimap is not rotating everywhere. So you put what you like. I prefer that way. So I think it's a little bit easier to find your way around the level. So I'm going to go out of that. But another thing um, on the scene component here, what I don't like, it's the perspective view. Because if you do play here, you can see that you have the shadow and you see the 3D. So I want that a little bit more like a, a minimap. So what I'm going to do here under the projection of the perspection type, I'm just going to change that to auto graphic. So if I do compile and save now, you can see that now it's closer, but we don't have the 3D. It's like just shapes. So I prefer this that way. However, I would like to have that minimap like bigger, right? So you can just change here the width and I'm going to put this number here. And if I do compile now and I do play, you can see that now it's bigger, but it's not high enough. So I'm just going to put it way bigger than that. So I'm going to put double and I'm going to compile and save that. So now you can see that the minimap is way bigger and I think it's look way better that way than having all the object in 3D but once again it's the way you want it. From here we're just going to see how to change the shape of our minimap because now it's a square but in a lot of games uh, it's round as well so we're going to see how to do this. So we're going to go back to our uh, minimap folder here and we're going to open the minimap material that we created. And here in this, we're just going to add one little thing and it's going to change the shape of this. So we're going to right click here and search for generate, uh, generate round rec. So we're going to take this one here. So from that, we're going to hold one or on our keyboard twice. And we're going to plug this one to the comma radius corner radius sorry and the other one to sharpness and this will be connected right here to our opacity so we need the opacity here so we have to change that here a little bit so we can do this so to change it here we just go to the blend mode and we can just change this to mask there we go. So now you don't see anything, but we're going to start playing with those values here. And you're going to see here it's going to uh, take form. So 
if you go 0.5 here, you see it's doing a round. So if you do like 0.4, you see it's changing the same. So this is going to be uh, basically your shape that you want. So I'm going to book 0.5 to have a round here. I'm just going to convert that to a parameter and I'm going to call that shape. So just I know exactly what it is here. And this one is just the sharpness of the edge here. So if you put a number like 100, you're going to see it's a little bit sharper, but it, it's kind of hard to see. So you can play with those value and you put what you like. Um, doesn't really change too much, right? You, you could even not have in it and it's not going to change <laughs> too much. So you can leave it as is or you can have one and start playing with the sharpness if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to leave it without. So I'm just going to save this. And now if I go back to my map and do play, you can see that the minimap is now a circle. So that's starting to get shaved, that's starting to get uh, better. So we're going to see how to make it way better. From here, I'm just going to add the asset. So the picture is that's going to go around my circle here. And the other one that you had in a preview here, that was where kind of a hell shape in a corner. So I'm going to add those image to my project. So I'm going to go to where my image are. are. So all my image are here. So I will like this arrow for an example and this corner border here. So I'm just going to open the content drawer here, the content browser, and I'm just going to drag the two that I want right here. So now you can see that the two are in the game here. So I'm just going to save that. And from that, I'm just going to put the corner here and I forget to put one. So I'm going to go back to image. And I'm looking for the circle here, the minimap circle. I'm just going to drag this one as well. So now it's right here. I'm going to put it right here. So my map here, I'm going to put 400 by 400. And this is going to be the same number. So I'm going to put 400 and 400. So now I would like to have this there, right? in it but if I move that you see it's going on the top here so it's not what I want where well, I want to see the minimap just not this so the minimap itself if you see here on the order it's zero so if you click on your minimap we're gonna put minus one so you're gonna see that when we're gonna move it it's gonna go right under you see it's right under now the minimap is a little bit too big so I can just change the border. So I'm going to change the border to maybe 4 then by 4 then. You see now we can see we start to see the border of it, but it's it's not enough. So I'm going to put a bigger number. And you can see now at 450, I can move that and it's fitting a little bit better in it. So you can play with those value to have it the way you want exactly but it's how you put an image. So now your circle is in another image. So here, I'm going to call that border. And this will be the corner. So I'm going to call that corner. So I have my corner here. So obviously, you put it where you want. So like in the preview, it was around here. But you can see now it's going on the top. So you can leave it going on the top like this if you like. If you don't like this, well, you're just going to have to change that to minus 2, for example, and it's go right under. So I think it's pretty sharp to add it at 0. It's kind of going around here, so I like that. So I'm going to leave it like this. So it's how you add image to it. So it's look a little bit better. So if we do play, you can see now our display is right there. So once again, it starts to get shape, and it's way better. So you can also see that I put it some, you know, the directions of north, west, east, and south. So you can do that, that by just adding another image. And not an image, sorry, but adding a text. And you take a normal text and you just take your text here. And I'm going to name that north. But here in the text content, I'm just going to put the letter N. And I'm going to size the content 
and I'm just going to put it right there. So you can see now if I do play, it's right there. So you, you can play with those uh, value and number to make it the way you want, obviously. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to select all of that and make sure that everything is anchored to the top left corner. So that way for every player, it's going to be always in that corner. So it's not going to move anywhere else. From here, we're going to see how to zoom closer from our minimap. So we're going to go back to our, before going back, actually, we're going to go here in the minimap uh, widget blueprint, and we're just going to create a variable. So we're going to go to our graph here, and we can remove all this. And here, we're just going to create a variable, and we're going to, get a, we're going to call that show map. And we're going to compile. So now, we're going to go back to our widget, uh, not our widget blueprint, but our 30% uh, character under event graph. Here, we're going to implement a key. So when we click on it, it's going to zoom uh, our minimap. So you can always, you know, search a key that you want. But I'm just going to add a key here by uh, project setting. Go all the way down, input and action mapping. And I'm going to call that map. And here I'm going to make sure that I put the key that I want. So for me, it's going to be M. And we're all set. Now we can go back our third person character blueprint. And we can search for map. So now as you can see, we have the even action map. So from that, I want to drag and get a flip flop. So the flip flop go between value A and value B. So it's exactly what we want. So every time we press, first time we're going to press, it's going to go to open the minimap. And when we press again, it's going to close the minimap. So now we need a way to access our a variable. So the uh, Boolean variable for show map here, the one that we created here. So how to get this? Well, from here, a widget blueprint, we can drag from it and search for show map. And we're going to set show map. And we're going to copy and paste this, Control c and Control v And I'm going to make sure we plug it as well in the return value. So that way, we're going to plug A to this one and B to this one. So the first one will be show map. And the other one will be unchecked. So we're going to make sure that this one is connected as well. And like this. So every time we play, uh, we, play we press M, it's going to go between those two values back and forth. So from there, we have to go to our event graph and we have to create the little logic that will help us to display that on the screen. So if we go back to our uh, widget blueprint and go to the designer tab. So what we want, we want this when we press that all of that disappear. So we're going to click on the minimap first. And if we go down here, we're going to have a binding, you see, visible. So we want that to be visible at first. So we're going to create a binding to play with this value. So create a binding. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I'm just going to leave the name as is. I'm going to all be on a keyboard to have a branch. And I'm going to take my show map variable here and connect it to the condition. And here I'm just going to copy and control V. So control C, control V. And I'm going to true to this one and false to this one. So the first one will be visible because when we start the game, we want the player to be able to see the minimap. And this one will be hidden. And we're going to compile that. So if we do play now, if I press M, you see the map is showing and not showing. So obviously I just reverse my thing. So I'm just going to put hidden and visible. And now the map is visible, disappear, visible, disappear. But we have also to assign all the other thing that we put here. So a corner, border, and the north to the same value, right? The same uh, key binding. So I'm going to click on corner and I'm going to assign the minimap visibility. I'm going to click on border, same thing, and on the letter. And I'm going to put the same thing. So now everything should work at once. So if we do play, if I press M, 
the minimap is gone. Press M again, and the minimap is back up. So now we need a way to have that big map appear on the screen. So we're going to do that. To get a bigger minimap, so we need to copy all of that. So we have to duplicate that. So we're going to do duplication. And this one will be, I'm going to put full for name. And the corner here, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to put full. Same thing with the border. I'm going to duplicate the border. And I'm going to call that full. And same thing with the letter N. I'm just going to put full. So now I do have that. So I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm trying just to get the other border. I'm going to move it. Whoops. It's hard. There is so much selected. There we go. Which one is this one? This one is the full. So I want the full here and I want this one here. And this one is the minimum. So I'm going to put it back there. There we go. Perfect. So now we have the other side. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the size of all of it. So here, for an example, what happened if I put a thousand? How big it is? Well, it's pretty quite big, right? So same thing with that. I'm going to put just below a thousand, maybe 950. So it's fit perfectly in my circle. There we go. Yeah fit pretty good and here I have this so I have to pick that a little bit bigger so I'm just gonna do it manually try to put it around here perfect so I'm just gonna readjust this this maybe this is a little bit too big so I'm just gonna size it down a little bit so it's fit a little bit better in the circle like this one there we go. That's not too bad. So now I'm going to select all of them and make sure that they're kind of assigned where I want. So around in the middle of the screen here. I'm going to make sure that I anchor this to the middle of the screen. And I forget the end for the north, so I'm just going to move it right there. Actually, I didn't copy it, so I'm going to leave it as is. That's no big deal. So, there we go. So, from that, we want this to have that not visible when we start the game. We don't want the player to, to see it, right? Otherwise, if you do play and you do this, it's not what you want, right? So, by default, we're going to take all the full here. And we're going to make sure that they're not visible. And we're going to compile. So if we do play now, it's not visible. And when we press M, the mini map is disappearing, but the big map need to be on the screen. So we're going to go to our graph here, and we're just going to copy all of that. And we're just going to have to reverse it. So if we go back to the designer tab here, on each of them, we're going to have to create the binding that we did earlier. Remember here on visibility? So we're going to create another binding. And I'm just going to remove this. And I'm just going to, actually, I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to control C. So we're going to take our show map here. And we're going to take a branch. And I copy and control V this. Here we go. So now we have that button. This needs to be reversed as the other one. So if we go back to the mini map. The first is hidden and the other one is visible. So this one will be visible and this one will be hidden. So now we have reverse. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to compile that, go back to our designer tab, and we're going to assign the corner full to the full one here. And same thing with the border. There we go. So compile. So now if we do play, if we press M, we have the big map showing on the screen and the mini map is disappearing. And if we press again, same thing happened, but in reverse. So it's exactly how you do uh, a minimap here. 
obviously there is a other way to do minimap uh, just to be careful that when you use this method uh, it's taking a little bit more a processor so more performance of your machine because you have two camera that are rendering your scene so it's a little bit more heavy on your machine um, but obviously you can you know adjust that and make it the way you want exactly what you want make it you know better than this this is obviously just an example so it's how you do a minimap so i will catch you on the next uh, video see ya